Hello, welcome to Outlaw Bookseller. Time for another Shelfie. Today I'm going to show you some of my Octavo science fiction hardcovers. Octavo is the format which is smaller than Demi. Demi is the format that's smaller than Royal. There is a brief clip on the channel about the difference between Royal and Demi, so that'll give you an idea that these are even smaller. This is for Dr. Tim, who demanded a Shelfie because he likes a well-designed book. So this is a run-through of what's on this particular shelf. When I get a better camera, I'll do the whole lot in a series and that's going to take some time because there is a heck of a lot. So this is just part of this part of my book collection. There's some Christopher Priests here. Chris is one of my favourite writers of all time, probably my favourite living writer. And I've known Chris since 1987. We don't see much of each other these days because we live in different countries. He lives in Scotland. I live in England. So um, it's been a while. And these are all first editions that you can see, with the exception of the book club edition of Inverted World. I don't have a true first of that. Shocking. What I do have a true first of, though, and it's quite uncommon, is Real Time World, his short story collection. Um, and that is a really uncommon one. It's not an amazing nick, but I've had that for quite a long time. These are pretty much all signed by Chris and the times we've met over the years. I think the exception to that is Inverted World. Um, as I say, I've only acquired that quite recently. I say that's a, um, a Reader's Union book club edition. So next to those, I'll just zoom in a little bit more, are the works of Keith Roberts. And Keith Roberts is another favourite science fiction writer of mine, wonderful pastoral English science fiction writer, who I never got to meet, and I really regret that. I'd love to have met him, though he was a man with issues, um, apparently very difficult at times, but he could be charming as well. So here, some great books here. Pavan is the one that everybody knows. That's the one that's in Golang's Masterworks, and it's right next to... The Affirmation by Christopher Priest, which is one of my favourite novels of all time, and Pavan is pretty good as well. And, and Chris once said that he told Keith that he thought Pavan was a work of genius, and Keith said that he was a silly sod. So there you go. Um, some of the Hutchinson ones from the mid 70s have some of the best covers. I'm just going to pull a couple of things off the top. There's a Lewis Shiner and a Silverberg. Get this out of the way. And these are bagged because my partner believes that this corner is damp and it's not, but um, it does need a good paint. So that's the Chalk Giants, a fantastic book, which I think was a big influence on Robert Holdstock. And um, I love that jacket. Um, these are firsts again. Just moving there, you'll see some Golax ones from the late 70s, early 80s. Let me just get this Spinosaurus out of the way, because we are, of course, in Jurassic Park. And the classic Golax yellow livery that we all know and love. These are such fantastic books. You know, if I, if I could fill a room with these, I would be a happy camper. And I just want to do a special mention for two of these, because they're quite obscure. Ladies from Hell from hell um, is one of the scarcer Roberts titles short stories and there has never ever been a mass market paperback of this book which is an absolute disgrace the, I think there is a paperback now print on demand from Cosmos Wildside but there has never ever been a nice little A or even a B format paperback of that which is just utter tragedy because of course it's absolutely fantastic Next to that is the book which I believe is the finest dystopia I've read, with the possible exception of 1984, well, the definite exception of 1984, um, and that's Molly Zero. Molly Zero, fantastic book, way ahead of its time. You could call it a YA title, um, a lot of YA dystopias pale in comparison to this. And what's fascinating about Molly Zero is that it's written in the second person present tense the entire novel so the narrative goes you walk through the door you switch the light on and it's really unusual and uncommon to come across that approach in it for a whole novel but it works amazingly well it's so immediate and you find yourself inside the head of the titular character molly zero 
Again, there's only ever been one mass market paperback of that. It came out in about 1980. The paperback was about 85 from Penguin. And the reason why this happened was because Keith, as I say, was a difficult man and he used to have terrible relationships with publishers. So the people loved his work because it's fantastic, but they just couldn't deal with him because he was so difficult. Uh, great, great shame. Kite World, a famous one. The Lordly Ones, his last um, collection there from a major publisher. I bought that at the Worldcon in 87, I think. So Keith Roberts, another favourite of mine. It's somebody that, if you don't know, you really should look at. There's a couple then of early Kim Stanley Robinsons. Ice Henge in McDonald, and The Wild Shore, and the first of the three Californias trilogy. Um, lovely, lovely book there. I bought that in fairly recent years. So I really love McDonald hardcovers um, from that period. They really take me back to the early and mid 80s. A great time for me of reading SF. I'm not a huge fan of Kim's work. I must be honest, I find it very stiff. Um, he's a humanist SF writer, of course, and um, obviously a great guy and had an amazing career. Um, I do like the Three Californias books, but he's not one of my favourite writers. He's never quite rung true with me. It's just, just one of those things. He, he writes very well, but he's just not, not sort of to my taste. Something more recent I've acquired is another McDonald hardcover. He said moving this little Jurassic Park car out of the way. How sad. Um, and I bought this quite recently. This is Fred Saberhagen, the first book of swords. And I had a bit of a thing for fantasy recently. And this is a book I used to sell in paperback in the late 80s. And I've really, really enjoyed looking at some of the 80s fantasy books again. And this is just a beautiful jacket, classy thing. Saberhagen, a little bit of a hack, but you know, if you're in the mood, it's absolutely fine. Then looking on a little bit more Golanx, we've got some Bob Shaw here in the yellow jackets. And at this point, I'm going to bring this clip to an end and I'll post part two later on in the week. Book, Outlaw Bookseller, out for now.